today we are going to learn how to change an ostomy appliance. First off, let's talk about what an ostomy is. An ostomy is a surgically created opening through the abdominal wall that allows the body to excrete waste. Ostomies can rid the body of stool or urine. For the purposes of this video, we're going to discuss ostomies that excrete stool. When naming an ostomy, an ostomy is typically named after the organ it's created from. For example, an ostomy created from the colon is called a colostomy, whereas an ostomy created from the ileum is called an ileostomy. When attempting to tell the difference between the two, the colostomies tend to have a larger diameter and have many mucosal folds, whereas an ileostomy tends to be a little bit smaller in diameter and have a smooth mucosal surface. Once we have established what organ was used to create our ostomy, we then need to determine if it's an end ostomy or a loop ostomy. End ostomies are created by completely transecting the bowel. Then one end of the transected bowel is brought up through the abdominal wall to form the stoma. End ostomies only have one lumen. This is in contrast to a loop ostomy. A loop ostomy is created by bringing a loofa bowel up through the abdominal wall. Then you create an opening in the side wall of the bowel, and this allows there to be two lumens in a loop ostomy. One lumen is moving proximally, where the other lumen is moving distally. Loop ostomies are typically used for diverting procedures, or when you suspect the ostomy will be temporary, as loop ostomies can be closed in a minor procedure instead of a major abdominal operation. Now that we've discussed the rules for naming an ostomy, let's practice. Can you name the following ostomies on this image? Here are the correct answers. If you got it right, great job. If not, don't worry. It takes some time to get used to this terminology. Now let's discuss how to change an ostomy appliance. You should start by removing the old appliance. Ostomy appliances can be really sticky, especially if the patient is using an ostomy paste. It is best to use an adhesive remover to help gently remove the appliance from the skin. You should avoid using alcohol pads and hand sanitizer. While these can help break down the adhesive, they can also damage the mucosa of the ostomy. Once the appliance has been removed, you can clean the skin and stoma with a wet gauze. Next, you need to measure the stoma and cut your appliance appropriately. Many ostomies come with a template that can help you measure. These work really well for end ostomies, which tend to be more circular. However, loop ostomies tend to have an oblong shape and these templates don't work as well. If you're having difficulty finding a template pattern that fits your stoma, you can always measure the stoma in the horizontal and vertical axis. Then use these measurements to cut your appliance accordingly. I have two pro tips to share with you when cutting an ostomy appliance. First up, you can always cut the circle slightly off center if you need to adjust for a midline incision or another drain. Secondly, if cutting a one piece appliance, always pull the bag portion away before cutting. This will save you from accidentally cutting the bag and not realizing that you have a leak until after the appliance is in place. After the appliance is cut, you can either apply it directly or some patients use accessories to help prevent leaks. First up is the ostomy ring. You want to start by stretching your ostomy ring to the appropriate size. Then apply your ring starting at the bottom of the ostomy. Since stool runs down into the bag, you want to start at the bottom to make sure you have a good seal and protect the skin. The ostomy ring should be touching the stoma with no visible skin. Then with one hand, hold onto the ostomy ring inferiorly and stretch the ring over the stoma. Once again, the goal is to see the ring touching the stoma circumferentially. If you see skin between the ring and stoma, you probably overstretched it but don't worry, we can fix it. Cut the ring at 12 o'clock and then align each side of the ring to abut the stoma and overlap at the top. The other accessory is ostomy paste. You can apply the paste to the appliance or the patient's skin. When applying the paste, you wanna use enough paste to form a thick ring around the opening. When you apply the appliance, the ring of paste will disperse and fill in any gaps between the stoma and the appliance to protect the skin. If you apply too much pressure and too little paste, the ring will flatten out and will not be able to disperse appropriately. Regardless of if you use paste, an ostomy ring, or just the appliance, you will then apply the appliance to the abdominal wall. You want to make sure the surrounding skin is dry before applying so you can get a good seal. If you are using a two-piece appliance, you will apply the base and subsequently attach the bag similar to the lid on a Tupperware container. Let's go over some take home tips and tricks that you can use next time you're changing an ostomy appliance. Remember to use adhesive remover to easily remove sticky appliances. Next, make your appliance fit the ostomy. One of the cool things about wound care ostomy is that you get to be creative. You can change how you cut the appliance or use different accessories to make the appliance be the best possible for your patient. Remember to use an ostomy ring or ostomy paste as needed to fill in gaps and protect your patient's skin.
And lastly, go with the flow and be patient with spillage. Remember, patients don't have control over when their stoma empties, so sometimes you need to change the appliance a few times, and that's okay.